With every smartphone manufacturer's Android device, you get a different take on what Android software looks like. Most of them moving it quite far away from the experience you'd get on a Pixel or a budget Android phone. That's certainly true for Samsung, who loads its own One UI onto phones like this one, the Galaxy A53. You'll find a bunch of features and things worth tweaking with in it. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and in this video I'm going to show you some of my favourite features and most used features in this software. And if you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So number one is always showing the screen brightness slider. Auto brightness on smartphones has become really good in recent years, but sometimes it's an area that isn't as good on these mid-range products. Sometimes you'll want to manually adjust the brightness without having to swipe twice to get to the control. So to make your brightness easier to get to, you can have it show with just one swipe down from the top of the screen. Just swipe down twice to bring down the quick setting shade and tap the three dots in the corner. Now choose the quick panel layout option and then brightness control. Tap show always and now whenever you swipe down your notifications you'll get a display brightness slider on top as well. Number two is manually hiding or showing the camera cutout in any app. So sometimes I found with certain apps, particularly games, that the visuals don't always fit the screen. Instead Samsung places a bar across the top to hide the camera punch hole cutout. However, you can manually change this for any app that you want. Let's say for instance it's Mario Kart's or Call of Duty. Just go to Settings, Display and now find Full Screen Apps in the list. Now choose the Camera Cutout option at the bottom and you'll see a list of all your installed apps. Now find the one that you want to change, select it and if you don't want a black bar at the top, choose Show Camera Cutout. Now that app should completely fill the screen. Number three is adapting sound for your hearing. So one quite unknown feature on Samsung phones that's been here for a couple of years is called Adapt Sound. Using this you can ensure frequencies of music etc are tuned to your ears. And you can either go with a preset based on age or test your own hearing. To use it make sure you have a pair of earphones or headphones connected and that you're in a quiet room indoors away from any noise. Then go to settings, sound and vibration and then sound quality and effects. In the next screen you'll see an option that says adapt sound. Choose it and then tap one of the presets for your age if you want to or to fine tune it tap the test my hearing toggle. Go through the test which will then see how well you hear different higher or lower frequencies and then build an EQ setting just for you. And this will apply whenever you have your headphones or earphones connected in the future. Number five is a quick one and it's ensuring that the fastest display refresh rate is enabled. So to make sure the phone seems as fast and smooth as possible you'll want to take advantage of the 120Hz refresh rates. It's not enabled by default but if you go to settings, display and then choose motion smoothness you'll find two settings. Choose the highest one to enable 120Hz peak. Another simple one is just making everything bigger. Now this isn't a new feature but there are plenty of people out there who either struggle to see small text or icons or even just prefer everything to be bigger on the screen. And you can adjust this by going to settings and then display and then choose screen zoom. Adjust the slider until things are a comfortable size for you. Number seven is setting your phone to self-destruct. Well, technically it doesn't literally self-destruct, but rather you can enable the phone to automatically factory reset and erase all the data when there have been 15 failed attempts to unlock it. Maybe not one if you have kids that like to guess your pin code. Open settings, lock screen and now find a secure lock settings. It's near the top of the list. Enter your pin number and on the next screen you'll see an auto factory reset option. Now when you toggle it on it'll enable the feature that completely wipes your phone when someone tries unsuccessfully to unlock it 15 times. Number 8 is bringing back an app drawer button. By default you access the app drawer by swiping up from the bottom of the display on the home screen. However, some of you might find it easier and more convenient to have a button you can press instead. So head to settings and home screen and you'll see a toggle next to an option that says show apps screen button on home screen. Toggle it on and you'll now have a classic Android button on the home screen for launching the app drawer. On a similar note, bring back the power button. Now this is one I showed in the S22 tips as well and it's making your power button a power button again. Because in recent years Android phone makers have decided you'd rather this was for launching a smart assistant instead. So go to settings, advanced features and side key. And now under press and hold choose the power off menu option. Number 10 is double clicking for payment. In the same menu as the previous tip you'll see a double press option as well. 
so when you double press the button on the side, it'll launch the camera by default. However, you can choose to have it do something else instead. For instance, I found it really useful to launch Google Pay. So tap Open App in that list, and then choose Google Pay or Samsung Pay from the list of apps, whichever service you prefer to use. Number 11 is quite cool, and it's just playing instant games. Like a lot of Android phone makers, Samsung has a game launcher software that's designed to optimize settings for games. However, it also has a host of small casual games already available in the software ready to play. They're just basic puzzles, but they can be fun to pass the time. So just open the Game Launcher app, tap the Instant Play tab at the bottom of the screen. Now choose a game that you want to play, and you can go straight to it without installing anything. Moving on to camera tips now, and number 12 is Shot Suggestion. This is one relatively new feature, but it's been here for a couple of years now, and it's called Best Shot. So open the camera, tap the settings cog in the top corner, and now find shot suggestions. Toggle it on, and now when you load up the camera view in photo mode, you'll see a dot on the screen, and this helps you to line up your shot. Next is swiping to make a GIF, or GIF. Now when you swipe the shutter button, by default it creates a burst shot. Can be quite useful when shooting fast moving objects. However, you can actually change this action so that instead of shooting a burst of photos, it creates a moving GIF or GIF instead. Open the camera settings again by tapping that cog and now select Swipe Shutter Button 2 option. And then tap Create GIF. Now when you go back to the camera and swipe across the shutter button and keep holding, it'll shoot a steady burst of photos and turn them into a little animation. Last but not least, a very useful one to know for the video recorders among you is shooting in 4K. By default, when you go to shoot video, it'll be set to 1080p or Full HD. But it's easy enough to change it to 4K. Just open the camera app, go into video mode, and tap the FHD icon in the top toolbar, and then choose 4K. Now video will be captured in the higher resolution. So there you go, just a handful of tips and tricks for you to try on your Samsung Galaxy A53. It's worth noting that if you have another model of Samsung phone like the A33 or A73 or even one of the S series models, a lot of these tips will work for you as well, so be sure to have a look and try, and don't be scared to dive into the settings. If you did find this useful, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.